Okay, so we're, welcome to this next video on fluoroquinolone antibiotics and cumarins. Okay, uh, so uh, we've discussed the two types of DNA topoisomerase, namely type 1 and type 2 DNA topoisomerases. Type 1 DNA topoisomerases are all very important, but they are not the target for uh, either fluoroquinolones or uh, uh, Kumarin antibiotics. Type 2 DNA topoisomerases are the targets. Now, uh, there are many different types of type 2 DNA topoisomerases, and this is where the uh, nomencl nomenclature gets awfully confusing. Right, so um, the um, t DNA type 2 topoisomerase uh, oh dear, what have I done here? Topoisomerases, there we go, that's better. Uh, right, uh, so the DNA um, topoisomerase type of the type 2 that is the target for fluoroquinolones and coumarins is an enzyme known as DNA gyrase, okay? And it does exactly what I showed you in the previous video. It has this exact, um, exact mechanism, all the type 2 um, DNA topoisomerases work like that. So DNA gyrase is just an example of a type 2 DNA topoisomerase. Confusingly, it has another name. It is also called, so this other name is type 2 DNA topoisomerase, so that's fine. And then they call it 2. So it's called, it's the second type 2 DNA topoisomerase. But people get awfully confused between the, these two twos. This type 2 at the front refers to the fact that it cuts both strands rather than just one. This 2 at the end refers to what member of this great super family of uh, topoisomerases it actually is. So it's the second member of this family. Okay, so don't let this two confuse with this two. This two refers to the type of DNA topoisomerase it is. This two refers to uh, the member of this superfamily that it is. Okay, now this is the classical target of fluoroquinolones in te classical textbooks, but another target has also been recently found, which is the type two uh, DNA topoisomerase. Four enzymes, so the fourth member of this superfamily of topoisomerases. So, type two DNA topoisomerase um, of the fourth type here. So, four. Right. Now, both of these enzymes work uh, in exactly the way that I have shown you here. So, uh, they. Um, Binds to the DNA, and I just well, I'm going to draw it again uh, because we'll show how fluoroquinolones work. So now let's discuss how fluoroquinolones work on these enzymes, basically. Okay, so both of these enzymes work in this classical way that type two DNA topoisomerase work, i.e., they uh, bind to the DNA, they uh, chop both strands, they form this intermediate complex, they then un. Uh, release a twist, and then they re-ligate the DNA together. The way that fluoroquinolones work is that they appear to bind uh, to uh, the type 2 DNA topoisomerase, either of the DNA gyrase type or the type 2 DNA topoisomerase 4. So let me, show, let me draw the picture again. So let's say here is our DNA. Okay. It doesn't hurt to review things. So here's the DNA here. And let's say this thing coming along here is the either the DNA gyrase enzyme, i.e. type 2 DNA topoisomerase 2. So this is DNA gyrase. Or it could be uh, type 2 uh, DNA topoisomerase um, 4. So type 2 DNA topoisomerase 4. Right. And this enzyme, whichever of those two it is, is going to come to our positively supercoiled uh, DNA, and it's going to cut, it's going to produce a double-strand cut of the DNA. So let's draw this happening. Well, actually, firstly, let's, uh, let's, let's show where the fluoroquinolones bind. Basically, fluoroquinolones are going to come in and bind to this uh, to one of, to these enzymes so they bind to either the DNA gyrase enzyme or the uh, type 2 DNA topoisomerase 4 
So, uh, in that way, they are going to affect the function of this. And I wish I'd drawn the enzyme on the sort of side rather than on there. Um, let me draw this again. <laughs> Uh, I want the enzyme on the side of this. Uh, sorry, I want the drug sticking off the side so it doesn't affect my picture too much. So let's have the fluoroquinolone sitting off the side. It's a cartoon, remember. I'm not giving you the actual uh, structure of these enzymes and showing you exactly where it binds. I'm just giving you a cartoon representation of it. Right, so I can represent it how I want. Okay, so what happens is the... Um, the type 2 DNA topoisomerase, whether it's DNA gyrase or type 2 DNA topoisomerase 4, still cuts the DNA, and it still forms this nice little complex. So here is the uh, enzyme, which has formed the nice little complex, okay, with the DNA. Uh, here we go, like so. So there it has, it's formed this complex, it's got the fluoroquinolone bound to it here, and basically, uh, what happens is the enzyme still undoes the twist. So let's show it removing this twist. So now we've removed a twist, like so. So the enzyme's pretty pleased with itself. It's done what it was supposed to. And now the problem. Basically, it doesn't now re-ligate them together. Okay, so it just stays like that. This complex stays like that. Something causes the complex to stick like that. It can't re-ligate them together. So you just keep this complex here. So the fluoroquinolone prevents uh, the DNA gyrase or the type 2 DNA topoisomerase 4 from actually being able to re-ligate these two strands together and, um, and um, then dissociate off and continue on its work. Now, this... Um, this is believed to um, cause the recruitment of DNA repair mechanisms. So having this um, continued complex here causes the recruitment of DNA repair mechanisms. So DNA repair mechanisms are recruited. And basically, when too much recruitment of the DNA repair mechanisms happens, and let's face it, if the... If the, um, if the um, if the drug is, if the cell is doused in this fluoroquinolone drug, then this is going to be happening all over the place. So you get major recruitment of the DNA repair mechanisms because of this complex here. And basically, uh, when the cell cut fails to repair the DNA and it gets overstimulated, it's hearing that it's got these problems with its DNA all over the place. And also the fact that if these enzymes are all being taken out, you're getting positive supercoiling all over the place. Uh, that's maybe potentially causing the DNA to fragment down. You know, um, something uh, about this causes DNA repair mechanisms to get out of control and they start the apoptosis process. So they say, okay, we can't do this. We can't cope anymore. This cell needs to go because it's got major genetic flaws. So it causes the cell to die. And you might ask, well, why on earth would a bacterium have an apoptosis mechanism? Apoptosis is something, you know, that meta-organisms like a human has, because we are effectively, uh, we're not one life, we are a hundred trillion cells all living in this great city, effectively. And uh, if one of them starts doing something that's stupid, it needs to kill itself, basically, for the good of the other 100 trillion, basically, so that they can survive, and they're obviously genetically identical to it. But the bacterium, it's a single-celled organism, isn't it? Why on earth would it be committing suicide? Well, if you think about how bacteria grow, so let's say this is a bacterium, they divide, and they divide, and they divide. So this bacterium is living around loads and loads of other bacterium and all of these other bacteria they're genetically identical to it basically because they've all come from it when it divides it divides by mitosis it divides by asexual reproduction so it produces genetically identical uh, daughter cells so if one of them gets some sort of mutation that makes it dangerous then it's going to activate apoptosis pathways to kill itself because 
By killing itself, it is saving all its brothers here, who are genetically identical to it. So by killing itself, it's effectively saving itself. So that's why bacteria do have an apoptosis mechanism, just like our cells have an apoptosis mechanism. By killing itself, if it gets a dangerous mutation that could end up wiping out all the others, um, it saves itself, basically, just like in a meta-organism, basically. Okay, uh, so uh, we'll continue this discussion in the next video.